Hi, it's Chana Hansball. In this video, I'm going to run through some of my favorite Jimi Hendrix riffs. Um, some of them are obscure. They're not really the obvious choices that you might go for. They're quite obscure, but nevertheless, they're the ones that grab my attention for various reasons. Some of those reasons could be a characteristic moment or, um, uh, you know, the feel, the rhythmic sensibility of it. In particular, the solos that he did later on with the band of Gypsies, his playing is a lot more uh, funky, you know, it's, the rhythm is different compared to the earlier type of solos he was taking back in 66, 67 and uh, 68. The first riff I'm going to look at is from Driving South. Now this piece was recorded in London in 1967 as part of the BBC Radio 1 sessions. Now for many years it was very difficult to get hold of a copy of this. You, you know, the only way you could listen to that was through um, bootlegs. And I remember I had obtained a copy, a cassette copy of the, the Radio 1 sessions at some record fair I attended in Cardiff back in 1985, 1986, something like that. And the, the piece that really struck me the most was Driving South. It was just the solo. It was just wild. And um, anyway, in 1988, Castle Communications released this album. I think it first came out in 1988, and this is the second press, and... and this purple vinyl, I, mean, I don't know why. <laughs> I think it was the only one they had in the shop. So, um, And they obviously made a really good decision because they put the, the best version of Driving South on there at the time. I didn't know it was the best version because it was the only one that was available. But years later, the Hendrix Estate released this one. This is a triple album and it has three versions of Driving South. One on side one, the other on side three and side six. Three versions. And the other two versions, they're good. They're good, but they don't come anywhere near the four minutes and 49 second version. That's the only way you can differentiate them if you're talking to somebody about uh, this piece. The other two are slightly shorter. But man, the guitar solo is just unbelievable. It's just a series of brilliant musical ideas just strung together to create this amazing continuity. And uh, <clears throat> there are some uncharacteristic uh, riffs in there. And one of them that I want to look at specifically is this one. So it's in C sharp and the main riff is... the main melody which is and then that lick that really cool lick is uh <laughs> it's just brilliant the reason i think is uncharacteristic is i haven't heard him play that riff in other solos or he may be played permutations of it but it's unusual that it's this kind of figure, this melodic figure that just repeats and repeats. It keeps it going. You can see the notes as being derived from the Dorian blues scale. It's got the, with the root, the second, flat third, fourth, sharp four, five, natural six, flat seven, root again. So it's a hybrid because it's a mix of the Dorian scale and the blues scale. This track starts with the classic Mitch Mitchell drum beat. It really encapsulates, you know, it epitomizes uh, Mitchell's drum style. And that uh, the bass and the guitar come in, you know. The riff I'm going to focus on is the one that happens in the outro. It's quite discreet, really, and more of a decoration than a significant riff. And 
And again, utilizing the natural six that you find, you know, the one that we talked about in the first piece, the Dorian blues scale there. Very bluesy. You know, it's that classic uh, three note chord slide that you hear in a lot of uh, blues music. Um, so, forever referencing the blues, you know, although it was a new kind of music he was creating, the blues is underlying everything. The Cry of Love album, this was recorded in 1970 and released posthumously in 1971. The first one I want to look at is Straight Ahead. Uh, at the beginning of the solo, the band break down and there's sort of, uh, kind of Mitchell playing a role. And meanwhile, you have these call and response in the guitars. Hendrix has overdubbed the guitars, so there's a call in one guitar and a response in the other, and then it breaks into the solo. There's a huge leap there. <laughs> I'm assuming that he's got his thumb wrapped over to get to that uh, low note there. He's just playing the full uh, blues scale there. And he goes back up, jumps back to the higher register. And then he bends from the fifth to the, the flat seven. And then he bends again to the six, so that's what he's doing essentially. And this is interesting because he's, he's chromatically approaching the major third of the four chord, as it goes to the four chord at that point. The next one I want to look at is from Freedom. Now, after the main distorted guitar solo, it breaks down into this riff. It's really quite simple, but it's a cheeky little riff. I like the rhythm, particularly at the end of the phrase. So you have... So cool, so cool. Belly Button Window, which is the last track on the album. Um, it's there's no band, it's just Hendrix with a guitar, you know, it's kind of it's just the blues in F. Just, just that little riff there, it's so cool. Now this one's a really interesting one because it's as if Hendrix has gone back to his roots for a moment, you know, that more traditional blues style of playing. And the fact that it's just him and the guitar makes it even more potent, you know. The next two riffs I'm going to look at from solos performed at the Fillmore East with the Band of Gypsies. Now this is the point where Hendrix went off and experimented with a different band setup. I mean, it was only a minor configuration really, and that was Buddy Miles on drums instead of Mitch Mitchell. Now Mitch Mitchell was was a great drummer. He had great feel. He was, you know, he had that Elvin Jones thing going on, but he also had the funk and, and all these other things, very flamboyant and very colorful and dynamic. Um, but Buddy Mars was completely different. He was more sort of solid and, you know, consistent. He would just hold down a groove and uh, keep that going. Sometimes it was unusual because he wasn't as interactive as Mitch Mitchell was, you know, when Hendrix was taking a solo. Sometimes you want to hear Buddy go for it and play these kind of roles and things to interact with the guitar solo kind of like Mitchell does. I mean, it's sort of kind of a jazz thing, really. 
But uh, with Buddy Miles, it's just, it just holds it down, which has its own charm as well. One thing I noticed, though, when Hendrix plays with Buddy Miles, is playing is slightly different. It's more funky. <laughs> There's a solo that happens sort of around about the two minute mark. <laughs> Great riff. I've heard it before, he's played that a few times before, but um, just the manner in which it's executed here is brilliant. He bends to the six, so one, two, three, four, five, six. And then descends with the blues notes. This is derived from the same scale we talked about earlier, the Dorian blues scale, because it has the blues notes in there, but also the natural six and the natural two. So when you hear that, it deviates from the blues scale. The two go together so well, you know, the, the, the natural six and the natural two uh, integrated with the blues scale is a wonderful sound and it's, it's very common too. And then at the end of the solo, <laughs> it's quite fast as well. The last riff I want to look at is derived from Who Knows. Um, now this is another one that has a really funky groove. And Hendrix starts off quietly uh, with the... Very cool riff. So the riff that I'm talking about is this one where it goes... Ha <laughs> ha! 